Hey everyone, Steve White here. So I have a friend who uses Lightwave and he's looking to make the switch over to Blender. Um, and so as a former Lightwave user, I just want to uh, make a, sort of a series of videos to help him and maybe others who might be making, you know, looking to make that switch and sort of wrap your head around the way Blender works because, you know, it is a, a bit different from Lightwave and it's actually a bit different than a lot of other apps. It's traditionally been a bit unconventional better in 2.8 as far as that goes but from my own personal experience um, when I first started using Blender uh, or learning Blender I thought that it was pretty insane I thought it was kind of you know it seemed like there were some kind of dumb design choices and all this but the more you get into it the more you start to understand the reasons behind a lot of the way it works and and it's actually a very solid and very fluid workflow anyway I just thought that um, you know, maybe I could show some things in Blender and uh, maybe maybe help him and uh, maybe others to get up to speed. This is version 2.83 and it is the most recent version of Blender. It was just released, uh, I believe, Thursday this week. And when you first open it up, you're going to get this little splash screen. And if you've already opened it up before, you won't get this. You'll get just the regular splash screen that has just your you know most recent files or whatever. You know, and you can always go into preferences and change these things later. But this is just a quick setup. You know, you can choose your language, your shortcuts, you know, what you know, whether you want to select with right or left click, and then you know what you want to do with your space bar, and then the, your theme. Now, for the most part, I would leave all of these alone. The only the only exception would be this space bar. Coming from Lightwave, you're probably used to hitting the space bar a lot to either switch between points, polys, and edges, or um, you know, to drop a tool or whatever. You're going to do that a lot when you first start using Blender, most likely. And if you do that with, and you leave it on play, um, every time you hit spacebar, it's going to start the timeline playing. And that's going to get annoying as shit really quickly. So what I would do is just go ahead and just um, choose tools or search. For me, I like search. It's probably, uh, I don't, I haven't used the last few versions of Lightweight, but um, I believe they've added a search function. So, you know, you might, uh, might choose that just for that reason and then of course there's a theme um, I like the blender dark myself I think it's the easiest on the eyes um, but you know if you if you want like XSI or you know moto or Maya or something like that you know you can go with one of those but um, for me I just like the blender uh, dark the one last thing I'll say about these options is about the shortcuts now I know when people switch over to a new app sometimes they they like to kind of keep using the shortcuts that they've used for years. I would not recommend doing that. I would not bring your Lightwave shortcuts into Blender and start customizing everything. It's going to make it a lot harder to follow tutorials. And, you know, I think that once you start changing them, you're going to be overriding some other Blender shortcuts. And then you're just going to be fighting against yourself. So I would recommend learning the Blender shortcuts. What I did when I first started was I, every time I came across a new shortcut, I would just jot it down on a piece of paper. And after a while, they just became second nature. So that's just a basic introduction. I will cover specific areas in different videos.